Welcome everybody to IT Pro TV's live week capture the flag challenge. I'm your host Don Pizzette here in studio with Mr. Daniel Lowry. Daniel, how's it going? It's going great. Having a great time. Hopefully everyone is having a good time at live week. Unfortunately, I couldn't be here, but I wanted to bring you guys something really cool. So that's what we're going to try to do today. Yeah, you know, I, I tried strong arming Daniel. I said, if you're not going to be here for live week, then you're going to have to be here for dead week. It's your choice. <laughs> uh, but we uh, almost went with it. <laughs> we. We certainly wanted to have a Capture the Flag challenge because they're a lot of fun. Now, let, let's start off a, a little slow here for people that are just tuning in. If you don't know what a Capture the Flag is, these are hacking challenges that you see pretty commonly at a lot of the big conferences that are out there, RSA, Black Hat. Uh, Besides, you, know, you name it. Yeah. They all have something. And you know, basically what they've got are a, a series of machines that are set up, or it may even be a single machine, that they have stashed away some data on. Those are the flags. And... As an attacker, you've got to be able to get in and gain access to that data by using one or a multitude of vulnerabilities. Uh, and, you know, it's all in a challenge format. So, Daniel, is that a good summary? I, I think you nailed it right on the head, Don. There are different types of capture the flags, but that is definitely one of the prevalent ones, especially if you're doing these things at home, uh, downloading them and, and install, running them on a virtual machine like we're going to do today. It's a very common format for them to be so that you don't have to have a whole network infrastructure set up. People aren't having scoreboards. That's kind of what you see typically at like a con. But yeah. if you want to practice at home, you want to get your feet uh, wet and play around with this stuff, this is a great way of doing it. Download some vulnerable machines that are capture the flag specific, get them up and running, and start attacking. Now, I remember last year at Black Hat, uh, you know, we went downstairs to the area where they had all the, the hacking competitions going on. And I, I went down because I, I wanted to see. I thought it would be interesting. And it was Teams. Yeah. sitting in their, in their tables, kind of closed off because you weren't supposed to bother them while they were hacking. And the lights were dimmed, and it was very quiet, and they would go all day long. And if I had to sum it up in one word, it would be boring, right? I mean, it was just, you really had no benefit in watching. You, yeah. you were better off just waiting and getting the summary a few days later. So what we wanted to do was a capture the fact that it was a little more exciting, right? Uh, where Daniel is going to take a challenge mm -hmm. and walk us through the process. So he's going to talk. I'm going to ask him questions. So we're going to bug the hell out of him while he's trying to, to basically get into this machine and, and compromise it. I'm a big boy. I can take it. <laughs> and and the, the machine you've chosen has uh, five flags? Yeah, this one has five flags. The one I've chosen. Actually, if you want, we can jump into the computer here real quick, and let me just show you where I got these things from. This is my Kali Linux machine, but if I go back over to my Mac OS... From vulnhub.com, which you can see up here, there's the URL if you want to grab that. These are a series of uh, CTF machines that were released uh, by the DCAU user, whoever this is. And so you have DC1, DC2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. I figured let's just start with the first one and uh, let's have some fun with it. They are a ton of fun. You can play around with these. There's a lot more found on Vulnhub. So if you like what you see here and you're like, man, I worked my way from DC1 to DC6 and I'm I'm ready to rock with something else. Just start looking through Bone Hub. They got so much interesting and different aspects. I've learned a ton from going to Bone Hub, downloading a latest machine, and trying my hand at it and see what I could figure out. Yep. And for the audience at home, if you want to try this, you absolutely can. This isn't a yeah. do not try this at home. <laughs> uh, you can download this, run it yourself. And the best part here is Daniel, he's, he's only got one stab at this, right? So we're going <laughs> to give him a chance right now. If he fails to get some of the flags, Maybe you can work at it That's and figure right. it out and get a little further. If you do, make sure you tweet that out to us so we hear about it or yeah. at least send Daniel an email and say, Daniel, loser. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how you I'm do it musically. Ego, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah, Maybe a voicemail. Yeah. Uh, so, so be sure to send that one in. But um, with Daniel, we do want to make this a little bit more fun. So we're going to uh. stick some some ground rules on what you're, uh, what you're able to do and what you're not. Uh, the first ground rule, rule we want to set, 30 minutes. You've got 30 okay. minutes to capture as many flags as you can. Oh, now, you know, that's actually a really good rule because a lot of times these things can, you're, you're just sitting there going, hmm, having, some, having some time on me is going <laughs> to, it's going to stress me into trying things. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so 30 minutes. Now that also means that he's going to have to do a little balancing. Like if he's on a flag that he's just not figuring out, it makes sense to skip it, go to the next one and maybe come back if you have more time. So time management is a, is a fun thing. So we're going to do 30 minutes. Uh, I'm going to break out a timer here in just a moment, set it up on the podium. So we'll have that. Uh, next rule, no metasploit. Ah. Uh, you know, metasploit is like the easy button put, of pen testing. Put my hand behind my, my back, why don't you? <laughs> yeah. Yep. So uh, otherwise, we wouldn't even need 30 minutes, right? Some no, of these things would be over pretty quick. Pretty quickly. Yeah. And, and, you know, in the field, if you're a pen tester, you may right. use that. But 
Metasploit isn't going to help you find unknown exploits in most scenarios. So, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna prohibit that one. You got to do it okay. by hand. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I don't think it's a matter of win or lose based on the number of flags. There's five flags. Okay. Let's just see how many you can get. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's a good way to go because sometimes that that just works itself out. There's just one flag or two flags or a certain flag that's more difficult. Maybe you don't have experience in that. I know I've run across that plenty of times. It's like I I just don't know what to do here. And that's where, hey, you know what? If you guys find the flag, kind of what Don was saying before, if you guys find a flag I don't find, or if you have a different way that you found a flag or you use something different than what I've done, I would love to hear about that. I think that stuff is awesome. Tweet that out to us. Send us an email, a postcard, whatever you like, and uh, we'll, we'll definitely check that out. So it's awesome to see how different people come at these things from different perspectives and techniques and stuff, and I love that. And I think uh, there's a lot can be learned through that shared experience. All right, so Daniel, um, I think it's it's about time for us to get started on this. Okay, I'm going to break out our timer, which we got a, a nice big timer here. I am going to this is the hardest technology <laughs> I'm going to work with today. Uh, I'm going to set this for a cool 30 minutes and 20 seconds. That way, I can have time to set it down and not knock it off the right. table. There we go. So we got a 30 minute timer. It's just a decrementing thing. So as yeah. the red pie gets smaller, you're running out of time. I'm so. running out of time. I guess I better jump into this. I've already started the VM up in I'm running VMware Fusion and I've got a, um, a, a, a network that I, you don't want to expose these things to, to the <laughs> internet because they are vulnerable. So I've got it in a lockdown thing. If I need to get something from the internet, I can grab it through my Mac. So if, if that happens, that's what we'll do. So I'm going to jump back into Kali. Let's get rocking on this thing. Let me open up. I'm using uh, Terminator as my terminal. I like it because it's very Tmux-like without having to really know Tmux too much. Uh, I like being able to split the panes and everything, and I'll, I'll make sure it's something we can see. So uh, since I'm running inside virtualization, I need to discover the IP address. If you're doing this kind of thing, you can use net discover. Discover. Dash I for the interface. ETH0. Dash R for the range, and I'm in 10.10.10. 10, 10, 10 zero slash 24 network hit return and it is scanning now help, help me understand I'm, I'm gonna stop you for just a second so yeah. as somebody i i'm not done a capture the flag because i'm yeah. not a, a security person so you have no idea what these flags are i have no idea right this so is... how how are we going to know what a flag is? like how will you know you actually hit that's a great radar? question typically what you'll see is it says flag one flag two or flag it's, it'll have something like that maybe sometimes you'll see them as like an md5 string something to that effect so that's what i'm looking for as far as flags go but most of the time it says flag and inside of it will be an empty five string so you can prove all right and so you you've got no guidance other than that and Correct. so you don't even know what machines are in the lab and that's what you're trying to figure out right now Correct. is just what, what's even sitting there that's it okay so right now i'm looking at uh, what my box has discovered and net discovery just uses arp to figure out what's on its network and i've got 53 and 56 and i'm pretty sure 53 is another vm that i have running so I think it's 56. So let's do an nmap. We'll clear this out. Nmap. And I'll just do a real quick dash T4 dash N dash PND. I'll just go with whatever comes up. And 10.10.10.10. Ten dot, ten dot ten, dot ten dot ten, the pressure. Dot 156, I think I said it was. And there we go. Let's just see what comes back. So immediately I get port 22, port 80, and port 111, which is RPC stuff. So that's cool. It looks like it's going to be a remotely uh, administered web server. So I'll just run nmap again. Dash, but this time I'm going to throw some extra flags at it. Dash A is going to run like a, a, um, a certain set up. It uh, does OS fingerprinting and versioning. So it's easier to do this. So dash A and then dash SC so it runs safe scripts. And I'll speed it up with T4, increase the timing. Dash N does no DNS, dash PN does no ping. So if it's blocking pings, it doesn't matter. It still scans the box. And a lot of systems are doing that today, yeah. right? So. Yeah, so it's, a, it's always a good option. Plus, it makes things faster. You don't have to wait for it to ping. I like fast. So in here, we're going to do dash P, which tells me which ports I want. And I have just 22, 80, and 111. So, and then give it the IP, 10.10.10.156. And a lot of times what I'll do is, let me bring open... A, a new tab there. Not a new tab. I wanted a new pane. Let's see here. There we go. Split or vertically. That's good. Let me create 
a folder is what I should have done. So MKDIR, call it live, CTF, CD into live, CTF. There we go. And here I'll do, I can kill this now, close. And here, I love that. That's fun. <laughs> oh, there's just control C. There we go. And I will just dash O for output into live CTF. Might have to do a dot slash. And I'll call it slash and map dot txt. All right, there it goes. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting all that information, doing that enumeration. I need to know more about this machine other than it's a web server. Of course, I can open my browser and start seeing what website is on it. But I want to learn about the technologies as well. And under the hood, we've got port 22. It's running OpenSSH version 6.0.1 and Apache HDBD. And I do see underneath this, this is why I like to run those scripts. I see it's running Drupal 7. Okay, I do have a little bit of experience with hacking at Drupal. Uh, so first thing that comes to my head is Drupal Geddon was pretty common. So what I want to do now is verify that this is actually running Drupal. Well, I mean, it is running Drupal, but I want to see if Drupal 7 is correct or, you know, what's going on. I also have a bunch of entries, 36 disallowed entries in robots.txt, which is a common place to, to hide directories for a web application. Uh, so crawlers don't find them. So I'll, I'll take a look at a robots.txt file as well. All right, let me move into the live CTF here. Yeah, there's my nmac.txt. Excellent. Clear that out. And, and you're saving that because you're going to need to refer back to that. Yeah, as you... yeah as, as you do, it's always a good idea. To, like anything you find that's good information, pop that into a text file so that you can keep it around and refer back to it whenever you need. Like, what, what port was that? Especially if they get into weird ethereal ports or something. Mm -hmm. It can be super helpful with that. Okay, let's see here. Uh, let's open the browser. And let's see here. Go to 10.10.10.156. And yes, it is definitely a Drupal site. Excellent. It's got a login page. This looks like a pretty standard install. Like nothing crazy going on. I've got to create a new accounts tab. So maybe I can create an account. We'll just try test, test at test.com. Create new account. Thank you for applying for an account. Your account is currently pending approval by the site administrator. And in the meantime, a welcome message for the instructions has been sent to an email address. Well, that's never going to happen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so can't just create one. Probably try to request a password. That's that's probably not where they're going with this. So let's just go back home. Let's look at that robot.docs.txt file. So if you go up into the address bar, just forward slash robot robots.txt, you see that this file, A, I have access to it, which is nice. And I can see some disallowed directories. I can see some disallowed files that are here. So a lot of times I just kind of crank through these, see if there's any kind of low-hanging fruit inside of them. Maybe that flag, you can't, you can't dis, uh, disregard something. Go, ah, yeah, ah, it's, yeah, great, it's, a, it's an entry. Go in each one of these things and see, does it typically take a lot of time and my clock is ticking? Yeah, uh, it does, but if I'm going to find flags, that's what i got to do. So let's go to includes, I'll just copy and paste them. And that, that robots.txt file is kind of a double-edged sword, right, because it's supposed to stop the like Google or other search engines from crawling your site and, right. and doing all that. But if you put sensitive folders in there, it's kind of giving them away. You're telling people where to look. So on some servers, they actually protect that where you're not able to just hit robots.txt, right? Uh, yeah, sometimes they'll, they'll hide that away or just not give you access to it. Um, not all the time though, just because most people are smart enough nowadays to go, I'm not gonna put anything sensitive in there. It does still happen. Don't disregard it, but um, you, you find a bit a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to that. So I'm just going to keep slapping these in here. Right now, I'm getting forbiddens, which means that there is some security here. So there's permissions that are being put on these. So even though I can find them, I can't get into them. Maybe I want to do some directory fuzzing against that. I can still find stuff from time to time, even if you have a forbidden. Uh, I'm just going to keep pasting these in here. Keep double slashing. Yeah, they all seem to be forbidden. I'm going to 
scripts would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Give me scripts. I would love to get into the scripts directory. You know, I guess uh, not, not every challenge has to be hard. Sometimes yeah. they give you an easy one. Yeah, yeah. And this, <laughs> this was uh, meant to be a, a beginner stuff. So, uh, But this is definitely not yielding any fruit so far. And there we go. Forbidden. So all those directories are forbidden. That's, that's good security on their part. But let's take a look. We do have changelog.txt. This might show me some versioning information if it's available. Hopefully I'm not going to get forbidden with that as well. And you might be going, man, this seems like a lot of um, minutia. And, and yeah, it can, it can be a drudgery. But when you find a flag, you go, oh. you know, it's, it's the hit you need to keep going. No changelog stuff there. Let's look at install.txt. That might have some versioning stuff. That's, that's why these text files can be super helpful. All right, paste that. And, ah, we actually we have some, some action here. Let's see what we get. All right, so it's talking about Drupal. It says the web server or a web server, Apache version 2.0 is recommended. Um, PHP 5.2.4 or greater. Only one of the following, uh, or just as one of the following databases. So MySQL, MariaDB, PostgreSQL, or SQLite. So it's just kind of giving me some information about Drupal. That's good. Let's see, what else do we have here? Upgrade.txt, that can have some good stuff. Let's see what we got. Oh, and I hate when I do that. What you're hoping to find is where you can figure out what version of Drupal it is. Yeah. And if you knew the version, what would be the next step? Like you'd go and look for exploits in that, yep. that version? Man, Don, you are a smart man. I just make it up as That's I go. That's exactly right. Because if, <laughs> if I know what it's running, then I can really start narrowing down my search parameters when it comes to exploitation of it. Uh, we do have some... It does look like it's telling me that minor versions of 7. Um, so if, if I want to update... From seven eight to seven nine, and from seven six to seven ten, this is the instructions that I want to follow. So I definitely know I'm working with a version seven of some ilk. Um, this is taking up some time, so I'm just going to go with. I know it's version seven at this point. Or at least I have a very good idea that that's what it is. So I want to start getting at this thing. So I know that this is here. I could probably run some vulnerability scanners like Nick Two uh, and do some directory fuzzing, something like um, GoBuster or Derb to try to enumerate. We've gotten a lot of interesting information just from robots. I, I th I'm, I'm thinking Drupal's where the road they want us to go down. So that's where I'm gonna focus my efforts. Let's get back in the terminal. I'm gonna actually just shut this down one workstation. There we go. That way we can just bounce back and forth. And here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run search exploit and see if there's any Drupal Geddon, which I'm pretty sure there is. I think I've done this before on another box and a different CTF. So I know I've done something with Drupal before. So then I'm going to grip out. A lot of times you'll get like denial of service attacks. I'm like, I'm not trying to DOS this thing. So get that out of the way. So there we go. I do have some entries and I got a bunch of entries here for Drupal 7.0 through 7.3.1. Looks like they're SQL injections. Um, let me, I'm going to just reduce the font just a bit. I'll zoom in so everybody can see, but I, I like to be able to see the entire line there. There we go. So I've got this group, which looks to be probably from the same, uh, exploit writer, just in the way they're formatted. Like, I think this is the one I've done before Add admin user. It's a Python script. I'm not as good with PHP, so I'll definitely want to stick with Python because it's just more in my wheelhouse. And I've got some Drupal getting three, I've got Drupal getting two, and these are authenticated, so I can I can ditch those. I don't have authentication to this. Um, and this one's a Metasploit module, so <laughs> that's out of the out of the question. So I might want to go with something like this, but I think I've done this one before where I've added an admin user, which will give me access to the panel, and I might find flags in there. So let, let's just start with the top and work our way down, see what we get. So this is Right there. Which so, is probably why you've seen this one before, because you just start at the top and work your yeah, way down. Yeah, you just start at the top and work <laughs> your way down. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to copy that. Let's see. Here. Slash users share exploit DB slash exploit slash PHP web apps. And that one is 34992.py. And I will save it here. All right. So I should have it there, which I do. And usually what I'll do is I'll nano that joker, uh, 34992, just to kind of take a look and see if there's any kind of instructions that they have for us inside of there. Uh, this material is at education purposes. Any damage caused is not their fault. 
<laughs> start from Drupal, pass import Drupal hash. Just kind of giving you some idea of what this thing is doing. Calculate an untruncated. So what it should do, based off of what I'm seeing here, is add an admin user, which is what it said in SearchSploit. So if we can add an admin user, that would be great. So control X and let's run that joker. So Python 34992.py. Let's just see here is giving us a cool splash page. SQL injection, Drupal, death for everyone, right? Uh, and then the <laughs> options, if I need help, that's cool. All right, so dash T for target or dash dash target equals dash username. So insert a username. So it's telling me that I need to give it a username that I want to use. And then the same thing for password, insert a password. Okay, so Python, actually I can probably just go up dash T for target, which is in URL format as it says here. So HTTP 10156 like that. Then dash U for, and I'll make sure you guys can see this. Dash U, which is username, we'll just call it hack U, not UF. That's the school. Hacker dash P, hacker, fire away. Ah, excellent. Vulnerable, which is always makes me happy. Um, administrator user created, that really makes me happy. And then there's my login and gives me a URL if I want to use that. But I'll just, I know I'm already there. So hacker and hacker should be my username and password. Let's go to here. I will too far hacker hacker welcome and to the site <laughs> and i'm in all right well let's, let's pause here for a second so now now you've got you you haven't necessarily compromised the box underneath yet but you no. now have an admin account in drupal that is correct which is a pretty aggressive thing now for those of you watching home we are just crossing the halfway point on this challenge you got 15 minutes left and guess how many flags i've found so far Zero. So technically, still a loser. Still a loser. Even point. though he's got admin access to Drupal. Yeah. So yeah. So I better get back in, right? <laughs> All right. So I'm in Drupal. Let's look around. It tells me hello. I've got a logout. I can look at my account. Usually when I when I drop into something like this, I just start from the left side to the menu stuff and start playing around. So let's do let's do the dashboard, right? Hey hey, ho ho. Hey, your first I have, flag. I have found the third flag. All right, so, so what happens now? You, I mean, it says flag three. It does. You just take a screenshot of that, and that's the flag? Oh, uh, you can take a screenshot of that. Um, I'm going to click on it because it's a link. And in this one, this is, this is cool. I, I do like it when they do this kind of thing. This flag is actually a hint for the next flag. So it's telling me special perms will help find, and you'll notice that they got to really pay attention to stuff like this. See how this is capitalized. Special perms will find the password. But you'll need to know dash exec. You'll need to dash exec that command to work out how to get what's in the shadow. So it's kind of lending me to think, all right, a lot of times once I've gained access to the thing, I'm trying to escalate my privileges, I will look for like set UID and I use find and perms to do that very thing. So maybe there's a set UID that I could find. It does also have a dash exec. A lot of times when you find a, a binary that is being run as, as a set UID or it has like pseudo privileges or something, there is a, an ability for you to jump out of that or have it jump into a shell using those permissions. And dash exec kind of lends my thought process to think that's what's going to happen. But we have found a flag. I feel good. Not a complete loser. And how to get what's in the shadow, is that a reference to the shadow file yeah, with the passwords? that's exactly yeah. right. So Etsy shadow is where all the encrypted passwords are. So. Uh, that's good to know. We'll use that information as we go. But now, all right, so I have worked with Drupal before. I was able to do this before. And if I'm remembering again correctly, I created a, and you should be doing this, is anytime you learn something new, you write it down so that you don't forget. So I keep a bunch of things that I've learned that I don't use all the time in documents in, the, in a documents folder. So let's go look. I'm pretty sure I did this with Drupal. Uh, and we will ls slash root slash documents and see what's in there. Let's see if there's anything with Drupal. Yes, Drupal shell upload. Aha. Uh, this is paid off. Good job, Lowry. So uh, I will cat that. Cat slash root slash 
uh, documents slash Drupal shell upload. All right, so to upload a rev shell to a Drupal site, you need to install a new theme. All right, so we're gonna smuggle the reverse shell. That's right, okay, it's all coming back to me. We're gonna smuggle a reverse shell, a PHP reverse shell, into a theme that we then install because we have administrative privilege to the Drupalit site, and then we go to a certain like URL, and that should launch that PHP, giving us reverse shell, if I'm remembering. So it says, obviously, you need access to the Drupal admin first. All right, so it's under login, appearance, install new theme, and then hit browse. This might not be the same version, but it's okay. It should be similar. You'll need to have a theme for the installation and smuggle it in your rev shell. Okay, yep, I am remembering correctly. All right, so this was the theme that I used that time. Hopefully, it still works. So I'm going to grab that. That is forward slash project forward slash bootstrap at drupal.org. All right, so I don't have internet access on this machine because I'm stuck in that VM net. So I'm going to jump over to my Mac real quick and we'll let Mac do the heavy lifting for us. So let's see here. Was it HTTPS? Yeah. HTTPS colon forward slash www.drupal.org forward slash project slash bootstrap. Project slash bootstrap. Yeah, I can already see. I've, already, I've been here before. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so increase that font. It says grab the .zip file for your version of Drupal. So we're using version number seven, so that versioning information, again, lends itself handy. How are we doing on time, Don? Well, you have approximately 10 minutes remaining, oh, so man, better, timer's ticking. Better get to work. All right, um, let's see here. So I need to grab my version of bootstrap. Downloads, perfect. We've got 8x and 7x, and said to grab the zip file, which is right here. So I'm gonna download that. I will save that. Okay. And I'm not gonna call it bootstrap, blah, 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 blah. I'm just gonna call it bootstrap. All right, save that. Looks like it is done, perfection. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Python to serve it up as a web page so I can download it. Let's see here. Go to terminal and do Python. Oh, Python. It's Python, Don. Python dash M simple HTTP server. It's one of my favorite ways to smuggle stuff around my boxes is, oh, that's not what I want. I need to go to that folder. CD slash downloads, not documents. Downloads, there we go. And now I can run the Python. All right, so it's on port 8888. Come in here. Go, oh, I can do wget. Cool. wget http slash 101 on port 8888, and it's bootstrap. Dot, I think it's zip. There we go, excellent. So we have bootstrap.zip, bada bing. All right, let's take a look at what else I need to do, which is add your rev.php file, open file with archiver, add file, and just slap that in there. Okay, so I need a PHP reverse shell, which you can grab from Pentest Monkey. If you have Kali, I think they're built in. They might be lurking around. If not, go to Pentest Monkey and grab a PHP reverse shell, which I already have. I keep a, a running list of tools. So I will cp slash root slash tools and it's php reverse shell three, I think is my next iteration of these things. I keep changing what they're doing inside. So uh, I'll save that as rev.php. ls, perfect, there it is. Let's cat rev, no, I need to nano that. Nano rev.php, because you gotta go in here and change the IP and port that you want to run on. So. I'm running 10. Dot, oh, no, 10. Dot, 10. Dot, what is my IP address? I am 142. Excellent. Close that. And put 142. Go down here, change the port to, I'll just do 9999. And control O and save that. Okay, so now my rev.php, my reverse shell should be ready to rock. I just need to open up the archiver. So go to File Explorer, go to, what is it, Documents, no, no, Home. 
and we're in live CTF. And there's bootstrap.zip, open with archive manager, bootstrap. And I think all you gotta do is drop it over there like so. Yep, there it is. Rev.php is showing up and I'm just gonna go back in to make sure cause I'm paranoid, open with archive manager, make sure rev.php is still in there, which it is, excellent. So now I install, I install the, um, the theme here. Now, I, I know you're in a hurry on this, but in real yeah. life land, you'd probably try and pick the same theme that was already installed because otherwise people are going to notice if you activate the theme, right? Or in or, real life land, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you would want to go with something that wouldn't like cause eyebrows to go up or, or whatever, but here it doesn't matter. Not, not while the clock's ticking. And not while the clock's ticking, right? <laughs> uh, let's see here. So I've done that. All right, so now we install the theme and then we have to go to that. All right, so let's do that. Go to here. I think it's under appearance. All right, yeah, install themes. Install a new theme. Hit browse. Go to home, live CTF, bootstrap.zip, hit open, and hit install. It was successfully enabled the new LD themes. I don't know if that's necessary or not, but I did it. All right, so now, all right, let's do shift control T, not T, shift control T. There we go. And increase the fonts. Do NCAT dash VNL which is a 9999. All right, excellent, we're listening. Next thing I need to do is go to this URL, which is where that should be, copy, go here, smack it in the URL, hit paste, and go. It is churning and burning, so that's a good sign. Bada bing, I have shell access. Feeling good. I don't know how much time I got left, but I know I'm coming down on the wire here. You are just passing the five minute mark. All time right. is ticking. All right, so let's see here. So we talked about find and perms. First thing I'm gonna do is because I'm looking for, it could be files in here just called flag. So I'm gonna do a find and slash dash name flag star to slash dev slash null. All right. Find some flags. All right, so you're just looking for file names and throwing yeah. errors out. Oh, you found oh, a flag. I did find two flags. Oh, no, that's one flag. Oh, no, there is two. Ha-ha. Flag one <laughs> and flag four. All right, can, can I read them, though? Just because I found them doesn't mean I can read them. I have to be able to actually oh, that doesn't count. touch them. Yeah. <laughs> you, have to, you have to prove well, that you could have flag one, that data. Flag one is in the web directory, right? So it I need mean, you to be so able to browse a, that. Because yeah, if I do an ID, I'm, I'm dub dub data. So let's go there. So cat slash... What was it? Var, var. I can't do it. Var slash dub 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 flag ah, one dot txt. Right? Yeah. Aha. So I was able to read that. That's good. Every CMS needs a config file. Every good CMS, so do you. Okay, that's a clue to the next one, which I haven't found. And then cat slash home slash flag four slash flag dot txt. And can use the same method to find or access the flag in root. Probably. Okay, to find this flag, I'm supposed to use find. All right, so let's do that. Find da oh, slash dash perm dash u equals s s and dash type uh, f2 slash dev slash null. And right, so here you're looking for any file that's got sewed set so that the executable would run right. as root or with sudo. <clears throat> All right. So I'm looking through. Now I'm just looking for things that look like, like I don't. This like also, ping six that probably shouldn't be sued. <laughs> so if you're wondering whether or not this stuff is actually, you know, I got this cool website. Let me close that. Go here and go to uh, GT, GTOF bins uh, yeah uh, fo gtfo bins and you can actually type in ping six but there, there aren't any binaries that have that oh something wrong. that's cool so if you're looking for something that might give you sudo or sewage access um i see find is in there i think find might be our clue um, yeah so find i can get a shell with find by doing, yep, a dash exec, find dot dash exec bin shell, bing, we're 
good. And Dash Exec was from that hint earlier. And right. You got to follow the breadcrumbs. Tell you. So even, even if Ping had suet as root, it wouldn't matter because you can't spawn a shell from it, yeah. right? But but with find, you can. Right. Then shell, and then I think it's this, this. Okay, so I am root. Nice. Uh, nice. So now, now I have carte blanche. Well, I know where well, I want to go. Carte blanche and one and a half minutes. Yeah. Oh, really? All right. LS. <laughs> or I'll do uh, CD slash roots. And there's the final flag. Cat the final the final flag dot txt. Congratulations. Nice. All right. So I have found four flags. You found a flag three is what you found first. Right. Then and one, one and four, four. And now you just found flag flag. So you so missed flag two. two. So flag three top. Was it flag three? Flag what? one had a flag hint. One. It said, every good CMS needs a config file, so do you. And uh, you have 54 seconds. You shut your mouth, Pazette. <laughs> Let's go there. Hurry up. CD2 slash var slash dub dub dub. I'm assuming they're talking about, like, a Drupal configuration file or some yeah. web config. I, I don't know on Drupal, but in, in WordPress, I know they store the database credentials in the <laughs> config file. Oh. So if Drupal works that way. Hey, then... there is a web.config. Maybe it's in there. All right. So cat web.config. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Um, let's do grep flag for uh, web.config config. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, this. Normally I would do this. C import. Because this is horrible. 10 seconds. Ah! I dot spawn sp8 in two one and over ah. your 30 minutes are up I wasn't there. flags wasn't tonight there. oh you did get a nice bash prompt though. yeah was, <laughs> it, it makes it a whole lot easier to like maneuver around when you can see a prompt so that does help yeah. all right well um I'll, I'll be honest with you Daniel I was worried at the 15 minute mark we hadn't found any flags uh but dude that was tough then they, <laughs> They did start kind of kind of flowing along right yeah, there at the end. Yeah, once we got <laughs> past a certain spot, it was like, oh, there they are, there they are. Um, I'm guessing that if I looked through some of these these files or something, that I would I would end up finding a configuration file with a flag inside of it. Uh, if if you find it, please let me know uh, and and tell me how you got past the the Golden Gate there. So. Well, I, I think the thing that I learned here really was that in order to make you successful, we need to give you as, as little, as little time, uh, time as possible. Because you really, the first 15 minutes well, sucked. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I really appreciate your uh, enthusiasm there for my that was, skills. That was very cool. Uh, you know, remember what we were talking about at the beginning cool. of this, which is you can go to volnhub.com. Uh, yeah. they, they have tons of capture the flags there. Hey, how do they find this specific one? Oh, yeah, so uh, that was that URL we had up at the beginning of the show. So I'm at Volnhub, and I'll show you that. Take a look. So it's HTTPS, www.volnhub.com forward slash series forward slash DC comma 199 forward slash hashtag. And, and that should take you to the DC series, and you can work your way through. And this. are you running that on, like, VirtualBox or? Yeah, I'm running on uh, VMware Fusion because I'm on Mac, uh, but VirtualBox should work well, I think, in when I was reading about the the actual virtual machines itself that had been tested on both platforms and should work for both of them. So whatever you're running, you should probably get uh, get some good action out of it. Yeah, so if you want to play along at home, you can actually do this entirely for free, right? Uh, VirtualBox is free. Yeah. The Volnhub Lab is free. Uh, you use Kali Linux was your I main tool set? Yep. Totally free. So uh, grab those cool tools together, see what you can do. It's I'm going to say, this was super fun. This was a fun <laughs> one. It was a good time, and I like the time constraints, and you can't use mouse play. That was, that was cool because it made me have to, like, really process my way through it, not just point and click something and go, hey, I have shell. Yeah. Uh, but there were other, through uh, when we were looking at search exploit, there were plenty of other exploits that might have worked against this. So maybe try those and have some fun. It's a, it's a good way to learn. I know I had done it one way, and I was under time pressure, but now I want to go back and play with those other exploits and see if I can get those to work. Maybe just get, like, remote code execution directly without having to go through the theme install. Yeah, the theme install slowed you down a yeah. good bit because you had to go to an external site, and then you had to stand up a server to transfer the file. Well, and if I didn't do that, I wouldn't have found flag three. Oh, that's true, because right? it was, was in the admin inside. panel. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm, pros and cons, right? But, again, I guess the alternate way is if right. you could have gotten access to the database behind it, you could have found flag three true. in the yeah, database. Yeah, the database, yeah. I doubt that's Drupal. what I love about these things. There's so many different avenues in which you can attack them. 
And uh, I've seen these kind of things before where people come up and they get time crunch uh, CTFs and to watch how they work. And, oh, well, immediately I'm going to try this. Yeah. So you probably have a different way of doing it. I'd, I'd love to hear about it. Awesome. Well, Daniel, I really appreciate you spending the time yeah. with us. I, I know you're, you're going to be on vacation here yeah. soon, so this is not exactly the pressure you want. Uh, right before vacation, but at least you get to relax. Yeah. And for the you know the viewers out there in TV land, they get a chance to see how a CTF is carried out. Yeah. Uh, now, in a conference competition, as he found each flag, he would grab that data and turn that in to score points. Yeah. You know, they normally have a scoreboard that's going on. Uh, we're just doing it here for fun. Yeah. So four out of five, not, not bad. bad. Not bad. I'll take that. That's a win in my book. Yep. I think that qualifies absolutely for uh, adequate. <laughs> and uh, so an adequate performance. <laughs> As you need to keep usual. your job. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. All right. Well, Daniel, uh, any parting words for our viewers uh, on I, anything? I just highly recommend doing these. A, they're really fun. So if you like puzzles, you like trying to figure stuff out, it is a great time for a game. If you're studying this kind of stuff, if you want to learn more about hacking, web vulnerabilities, system vulnerabilities, doing these is a great way to, to do it without feeling like it's a drudgery, you know, because it has that fun factor to it. I've learned a ton of stuff just doing these things and having to google stuff and go oh i don't i don't know about this and getting out there and, and seeing what i can find and trying to make exploits work you'll you'll really up your skill set doing this kind of stuff and you'll have a good time doing it all right well ladies and gentlemen out there i hope you guys enjoyed it that's going to be a wrap for our capture the flag segment be sure to stay tuned though because live week continues with more coverage uh, really all week long. So make sure you check that out. And if you miss some of the live coverage, don't feel too bad. Uh, it will be posted where you're able to watch it after the fact. But, uh, you know, stuff's a lot of fun. And always tune into ITPO TV to watch Daniel's content because he's doing security crap Trying all the time. teach you guys this stuff. <laughs> I, you, and, hey, that's not, that's not a joke. We're laughing and having fun. But i show you how to do things like just like what we saw today. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, that's it for us. Signing off for IT Pro TV. I'm Don Pizzette. I'm Daniel Lowry. And we will see you next time.